بسم الله آه. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي آه first of all i would like to thank uh, دكتور عيسى دكتور طارق for to give me this opportunity to be here and also thank for all to attend this uh, lectures hello everybody uh, thank you for joining uh, our OSNT CME program tonight uh, i'm dr bayim from sahar hospital working as nephrologist Inshallah, I will present a topic specified for multimorbidity in hemodialysis patients. Uh, randomly selected few cases to highlight the issue of multimorbidity in renal multi multimorbidity in our uh, daily clinic, uh, clinical practice. This is my agenda. Five cases, just only a concise uh, uh, summary. I'm going to uh, tackle multimorbidity. Uh, multimorbidity what is multimorbidity, what is the complication of, of uh, and hazards of multiple morbidity, the uh, effect of multimorbidity in our uh, practice, in our practice upon CKD and indecision disease on hemodialysis, how can to assess and measure the multimorbidity, uh, what is the best approach to manage such complicated uh, case? Well, at the end, I will conclude my uh, presentations. Uh, my aim of talk, my objectives, how to approach and to identify the best trends, navigation, navigation practice within this horizon of chronic uh, kidney diseases. I'll start with the first case. A concise summary, we have Mr. S.A. He is 71 years old man, frail, walking as food handler, functionally, dependent and physiologically dependent on, on himself. He has coexistent chronic medical uh, condition form of, uh, he is indecision disease on regular hemodialysis since 2021 via Bermecas for a long time as an EV fistula failed multiple times. Last failed since 2022. He has co-existent uh, chronic condition, hypertension, uh, prosthetic hypertrophy, dyslipidemia, urolithiasis, peptic ulcer disease, uh, renal cystic disease, plus uh, chronic periodontitis. In one time of his life, he is maintaining on medication more than 11 medications. This patient initially presented at our dialysis unit. During chemodialysis unit, he complained of low back pain, increase was in mo with movement, become uh, less with rest. Hence, during dialysis, we referred him locally to our ortho and with the routine advice to refer the speciality of concern as it is non-traumatic pain. I don't know what exactly he means. However, a few hours later, he started to have complaining of fever and shivering. We did initial lab suggesting sepsis, high inflammatory markers, neutrophilia, all of that, plus fever. We decided for admission to diagnose and to do cerebral corca for this uh, sepsis. Here, the index disease or index morbid or the specific disease is end-stage renal disease associated with other coexistent disease uh, manifested uh, or deteriorated or became more severe with uh, sepsis. Uh, during admissions, we have referred to multiple speciality. I counted them. Uh, come in the top LID team, where after a few weeks, Wilbisha now has uh, sepsis, complicated with yeah, showering of sepsis, septic pulmonary embolism, uh, infective endocarditis, suspecting the situs, plus from the beginning, the source of infection, catheterated bacterial infections, we referred them to ID, referred for cardiology, and she, uh, how he developed uh, uh, catheter-related atrial thrombus. On background of valvular heart disease, he developed also infective endocarditis. They followed him by serial TE and TTE. During his admission, as a part of his uh, condition, he developed upper and lower GIT bleeds, plus uh, Taban confirmed all of that, plus he, he did colonoscopy, we refilled ulcerating colonic mass, we referred multiple times for gastro. Uh, regarding endocytis, it is suggested by CT, but ruled out by MRI. There was an abdominal mass seen by the surgeon who referred them 
تورا العظم this mass it was complicated penetrating the colon reaching to the anterior abdominal muscle something like this also referred to vascular surgeon around six times for another vascular uh, access issue plus he has lower limb uh, ischemia seen during that time by neurosurgeon chest uh, and also we discussed twice uh, with royal hospital people especially cardiothoracic during that time he has uh, at the uh, pulmonary valve there is a large mass complicated pseudo aneurysm in the valve itself uh, and there is perforation there is ulceration and there is calcifications but during that time uh, our cardiologist consult our cardiothoracic for possible surgical intervention in the form of prosthesis or something like this the patient uh, at the end after staying in our hospital for 68 days discharged on 27th of december last year I presented this uh, to give me such uh, that uh, some procedure which which was uh, which were done during that uh, admission around 46, uh, starting from she's X-ray, QP, venous Doppler, CT, she's ultrasound, MRI, CT was contrast, abdominal ultrasound, serial echo, serial echo, TTE or something like this. Huge procedures. Medication, all of this medication, I I, I in one time tab. And it usually be described, be described at one time, maybe 10, 11, 12 plus time on injectable antibiotics or anticoagulations, polypharmacy. L -l investigation, it is huge. I gave you some example regarding CBC, how many times it has repeated CRB, RFT, despite his own dialysis, vancomycin level, and during one time he maintained, he has mixed it, uh, infection, or polymicrobes, or prescribed uh, multiple antibiotics, blood culture, aerobic. Uh, anaerobic coagulation, but he did this is sample investigation. This is the first case uh, which represented multimorbidity, longest stay at the hospital, referred to multiple uh, specialities. Second case, we have Mr. KS, 81 years, majority of them they are elderly, more than 65, frail, bit bound, physiologically independent. He has the following uh, coexistent chronic conditions diabetes since 84. Complicated here, hypertensive. He's uh, sick stage four in the regular follow up at our clinic. He has coronary uh, coronary arterial disease. He did PCI, ICM. He has ICD. He has uh, uh, ventricular systolic dysfunction, 35% ejection fraction. He has prostate, this lipidemic, uh, uh, non cardiorenal syndrome type 2. This patient was roaming or visiting multiple health. Institute, what, else, what each institute, a lot of diagnosis, a lot of investigation, a lot of medication. So it is room, roaming patients. In one time of his life, he's maintained more than 10 medications. We, If you check his uh, history, uh, his progress, uh, his history of admission, he has a frequent hospital OBD visits and he visits plus high uh, rate of free admissions. Initially presented at OBD, admitted from OBD. As a schedule, he has a complaint of cough, vomiting, peripheral swelling, associated with acute on top of chronic uh, kidney diseases. We has also recurrent acute kidney injury. Hence, we admitted him for diagnostic antibiotic work up for AKI on top of CKD. Initially started in, he, was, he has a state of hypervolemia, pulmonary congestions. Uh, we started medical diuresis for at least 72 hours. Plus treatment to ATI, correction of anemia, all of that in order to improve this uh, uh, overhydration status, but not responding to this, this medical treatment. Uh, finally, we decided to uh, proceed for dialysis, hemofiltration. Well, vision is still admitted till today. Well, index disease here, well, reference disease here is secondary stage four associated with uh, comorbids, especially decompensated causes of heart failure. Uh, during admission, Taman, as usual, he is followed by different specialty according to the uh, referral uh, system. A third case, the same. This is a woman, 80 years old, frail, bit bound, cachectic. She has also uh, known multiple chronic medical condition, dialysis patient in Shinas. She is also diabetic or hypertensive or chronic osteoarthritis. She did total knee replacement. With the same situation, she is roaming around different institutes according to the level of uh, health care. Uh, in one time, she maintained on medication more than 13. 
with the same also the same situation she's frequently attending obds a and e visits uh, readmission something like this presented here at a and e escorted from shinas for diagnostic and therapeutic to work up for sepsis will profession diagnose during the time catheter related bacterial uh, stream infections which she has she gave a history of multiple access failure difficult parsca access on admission taman we have done a lot of diagnostic work up we're reaching finally to uh, a professional diagnosis, catheter bacterial uh, stream infection and thrombosis. She has hemodialysis access issue, referred to vascular surgeon, uh, diagnosed to have big catheter atrial thrombus plus compression collapse of D12, abdominal mass the same, was uh, a chronic CT angio, either inflammation or infective. She has chronic maxillary sinusitis, where she, during hospitalization, she developed multiple times of iatrogenic regional thromboflambites post cannulations. Uh, during her admission, we have referred to the concerns specialities according to what is written. Uh, she was discharged uh, on October last year. We hear the length of stay 101 days. The index morbidity here, the active issue is here. Indices and disease complicated with the other uh, comorbids. Uh, fourth again, woman, slightly young. Comparing to the others, 51 years old, wheelchair, morbidly obese. What she has as associated chronic uh, conditions, she's diabetic, who complicated with diabetic food, hypertensive, dyslipidemic, old CVA. She has history of right breast cancer, nominating invasive ductal adenocarcinoma with metastasis, which she was under close for up with oncologist at trial hospital, where she received all palliative treatment, the four palliative surgery, hormonal adjunctive chemo and radiotherapy, where she started dialysis since 2022 August. With the same situation, she is roaming among uh, different healthy institutes. With the same situation, she is frequently attending OBDs, any visits, readmission in various departments. Uh, she was presented in July last year, uh, fatigue, fever, hemopsis, Admitted for diagnostic initial work up to one with us. She has catheters, she has difficult uh, access, multiple access failure. In the patient present to the ANA with fever, rigors, we, they are putting uh, the initial uh, diagnosis, catheter bacteria, uh, stream infection, until proved otherwise. El patient admitted as usual. After being admitted, after being evaluated extensively, comprehensively, she has big crack. Plus, uh, catheter, uh, she had catheterated thrombosis and catheterated bacterial infection, uh, UTI, uh, infected foot gangrene, infected endocarditis, pyrexia of unknown origin, mixed, the culture showing mixed organism, CRE, VRE, fungal, or Taiwan, she has psychiatric issue, aphasia, or depression. We've seen by all of these specialities. Uh, the index is his. Two, uh, two index diseases, lindicision disease and metastatic cancer prince associated with other comorbidities. Uh, as I mentioned, she has MRSA and two Kifkas, VRE, or Candida, or Klebsiella, who maintain at one time more than 14 medications. She received, uh, I don't know, maybe majority of antibiotics that we have at her hospital, IV cholestine, robinum, vang, genta, antifungal, cephalexim, linozilid, and something I, I cannot enumerate all of them. Unfortunately, after all of this uh, trial, she died finally, unfortunately, disappointingly, uh, in last uh, November 2023. Well, cause of this is septic shock. We hear she has prolonged length of stay around 104 days. You couldn't imagine, but during that stay, she did a lot of investigations, a lot of medications, a lot of procedures, massive referral to everybody in the hospital. Uh, in last case, in order to show what is the uh, effect of multiple morbidity in our daily practice, this Mr. S.O., the same situation, 81 years old, the same frail, the bound, cachectic, dementic, the same situation, frequently attending OBDs, A&E, uh, high, high, high level readmissions, associated, the index disease here is advanced cancer prostate with metastasis. Tested and palliative treatment and operable received palliative chemotherapy. If you're referring to the, the like OBD appoint to, to follow up with the parent department or well, primary department, he was diagnosed with indecision disease, sometimes intermittent hemodialysis, sometimes incremental, uh, incremental hemodialysis, 
plus hypertension all TB. In the same situation, he is rooming patient among different uh, health institutes. Well, at one time, he is maintaining the multiple medication more than 11. Presented during hemodial sessions, he was admitted for diagnosis and therapeutic therapy for anemia, MRSA, since during that time, the culture revealed MRSA, that's why he was admitted. Well, during admission, he was followed by different concerned specialties. Uh, initially, you have discussed sit with the family multiple times, offer an end of life care, meaning no need to proceed for dialysis. The patient has skin overbone and even he has hypovolemia and not enough blood to be taken for dialysis at the end. But the issue, uh, they are hesitating, they are insisting to continue the dialysis. And as well, they are accepting the other surgical intervention, no surgical intervention. And the family insists to continue hemodialysis. During that time, we, ha we have offered uh, peritoneal dialysis uh, at the home therapy, but they are not willing for that. It's still patient admitted. Here, the index disease is inoperable cancer prostate uh, with complications. Now we have a state chronic medical disease and interacting with each other, reaching to a state of complexity of chronicity. Uh, Mr. SA, KS, MM, MS, and SO, they are giving this, those patients are giving us a best example for stress or tension relationship between the coexistent diseases and the disease of interest for what the patient ad ad admitted for this issue. There is some interaction between both of them, leading to what late diagnosis. Just as a nephrologist, you are interested in managing our disease of interest. But the issue is the other disease becomes, after being silent, becomes activated. So we need the help from the others. This help could be delayed. Uh, for leading to late diagnosis, especially if the vision uh, of the disease becomes more severe, late diagnosis, with difficulty also in treatment, more drugs, uh, surgical intervention or not, which may cause a high degree of disease severity and uh, ultimately prolonged hospital stay. For this is the interaction between our clinicity, uh, complexity between L chronicity and the comorbid condition. Uh, our routine modern uh, medicine, we are still larger, largely focused on single disease or organ pathology. We have a specific guidelines, we have to, to uh, predict the outcome, we have a list of uh, our chart for diagnosis, for medication, uh, all of that. It is clear as a single disease. But unfortunately, when we are doing with such complexity, still we are depending on breaking down into pieces. We are managing this individual into pieces, separately analyzing each components. We are not managing as a whole. Uh, as I said, chronicity and complexity it is a dynamic interaction between the patient intrinsic factor, mainly in uh, multimorbidity comes uh, on top, plus age, gender, frailty, as well as associated cofactors, socioeconomic, behavioral, cultural, environmental. Uh, multimorbidity, it is a hallmark of clinical complexity. That's why we should be aware of all of that in order to put uh, a plan for management. Multimorbidity, in order to define, we have a variability of, this, of, of definition. What is multimorbidity? Uh, just, uh, I will show only three most common definition. The first definition of multimorbidity, uh, it comes through WHO. They said it is coexistent of two, or more chronic condition, each of which either non-communicable disease of long duration, like diabetes, hypertension, CKT, all of that, plus mental disorders, schizophrenia, dementia, or uh, uh, chronic infection, TB, HIV, something like this. This is the definition of WHO. Nice guidelines, uh, nice uh, society, sorry, uh, define the multimorbidity equal to this presence of two or more long-term, it is long-term. Here, they define the physical and mental uh, conditions, uh, including also ongoing conditions like learning disability. They have added frailty or chronic pain. They have added if the patient has defective vision or hearing loss. Plus, they added also a presence of chronic alcoholism or substance uh, misuse. In European uh, general practice research work, uh, very simple, a combination of chronic disease with at least one uh, other disease, either acute or chronic, it could be, uh, uh, or biopsychosocial factors plus somatic risk, like somatic any congenital uh, anomalies. Uh, 
there is two expression what, about the multi morbidity or comorbidity, what the difference between of them. And all day, they are the they are very similar in, in, in definition. But nowadays they, they, they made some differentiation between of them. But comorbidity means coexistence of other condition, usually one condition associated with multiple chronicity. And this index condition is active conditions. Multimorbidity, almost all disease only unchronic without an index conditions. I, I just uh, only uh, give a, a skeleton regarding this represented comorbidity. It will be secondary care model. Patient here, index in the center, indecision, surrounded by other comorbids. But multimorbidity or only comorbids, we usually, there is no index disease in this situation. Usually, uh, you can meet them in primary health care. How much is common? It is common in daily practice, uh, growing over the last decades, because some are associated with uh, longer life expectancy. They have a specific situation of longer hospital stay, Be, uh, because they are very sick. You cannot discharge them. Hence, they, they create a morbid obit issues. Uh, they are uh, characterized by more and long medical appointment. They, they, they consume more medications. Uh, we usually, they have a lack of, between other departments or other concerns, lack of coordination or communication between assigned or concerning departments. This diagram showing just only age-dependent number of uh, chronic conditions on the left side, plus the prevalence of mul multimorbidity. Here, the dash line revealed is in, on higher side, reaching 80% for those patients who have more than six diseases correlated with the age, the age 100. It become also the same if the age is 80. So, uh, there is prevalence of multimorbidity, especially above uh, age of 60 or 65. The same, this correlated with the estimate GFR. You can find the estimate GFR less than 30. You can high prevalence of conscious fat failure, like this. If you have uh, high cholesterol, some cancer there, usually at the beginning, uh, there is a high cholesterol. Uh, when, once the patient reaches to the stage less than, uh, less than 30 ml per minute, the uh, conscious fat failure or hypervolumia still uh, will be uh, on a very high prevalence rate. In UK, there is a survey done by NHS. They found that 24% of the whole population in England, around 40.2 million, they have two plus conditions. 80% they have four plus conditions. According to the aging, they become like the norm. The healthy people around 45%. More than 50% of the population they have one or more to uh, chronic condition. So it is highly prevalent. A complication of multimorbids can cause all complications in the form of, will affect mor mortality rate, in hospital readmissions, in cost use or effective, uh, more, more use of primary care, the same for secondary care, social impact, the treatment burden, the cost budget will be very high. You are going to involve more specialities, prescribe more drugs, more lab, more procedures, contrast with, and etc. Also, affect the patient himself, the quality of life, physical, psychological, and social, social aspect. So it is uh, very important consequences. Here, exactly the cost. I just uh, mark by green uh, by green line. It will cost more with in combination of CKD, hypertension, congestive heart failure. The same for CKD and diabetes. This is what's called bubble plot. This is 100% and this is 1%. So it is highly causative, the CKD hypertension at the same time. So it is increased the budget. We have two types of uh, comorbidities. Acute comorbidities, if there is an activity of the uh, chronic medical condition, usually attending a &E, or other chronic comorbidities, outpatient usually attending either uh, OBD or primary health care. Acute comorbidity in R, they are taban. We have a high exper experience in attending high emergency admission uh, to the hospital. Uh, there is what's called fish pond diagram, uh, defining the causes of frequent hospital admissions. Why multi morbid people are coming frequently to the hospital at ER? We have a lot of factors, patients' factor, as you see, drugs factor, 
primary health care, care factor, sometimes secondary care health factor, sometimes from the family, lack of support, they will, give, uh, they will bring him to the hospital. The same for home, lack of home care, for, for an example. In our field of practice, this is a, a cross-sectional sample uh, revealing that the more attending comorbid patient at ANE chronic kidney disease, followed by hypertension, followed by chronic pulmonary uh, disease. Also, for comorbids, usually affecting estimation, uh, estimated GFR, and, uh, even the causing decline around one milli, one milli uh, uh, per, per year, if there is a state of comorbidity. Uh, usually on dialysis, our patient frequently seen in, uh, frequently seen comorbids uh, in our dialysis uh, unit would they will affect they have poor clinical outcome including taban mortality or hospitalization or quality of life we usually they have short life span uh, our short and uh, yearly life survival our survival rate becomes more and at first year maybe 80 percent they will decline by 10 percent each year maybe by the end of five or six years you can find only five to six patients that are continuing Dialysis, we the other time uh, died. Oh, I don't know what will happen to them. Um, there is a risk increase. Uh, uh, I'm speaking about the inpatient. I have spoken about the dialysis patient now. Will dialysis inpatient, even a hospital inpatient, our mortality rate is high in our hospital. This scheme representing a monthly percent of the dead people admitted under our care. Around and in January last year, seven seven percent of our admitted patients, they died, sometimes 2%, sometimes 6 This is a very high uh, mortality rate regarding our inpatients. Also, uh, the affect the percentage of unplanned uh, readmission, like in, in uh, last, uh, in our hospital, this is uh, prepared by our quality department. In March, April, May, this unplanned uh, readmission, 8.6%, uh, 9.7%. So during that, from April to May, there is Ramadan and Eid holidays or something like this. Uh, they are preferring to be admitted after a few days, they are asked for discharge and coming back, something like this. Also, uh, defaulters at OBD are very high. One of the causes of defaulters related to our patient in OBD is multimorbidity. This diagram showing this, yeah, and starting from January last year at Sahar Hospital, at our OBD, till October, at least 20% of the patients are not coming to the uh, our dialysis. They are defaulters. Because of, we have a lot of factors. I analyzed this uh, diagram uh, by this. This is the main cause of uh, defaulters. Come of this is multi-morbidity. Multi-morbidity, they are coming asking uh, to be in one clinic. Uh, sometimes they cannot come. Uh, they need to come one day to be with cardio, to be with euro, to be with just something like this. So usually they, I have high, high percentage of defaulters secondary to multi-morbidity. The same situation, multimorbidity is one of cause of high lama in our hospital. This is diagram showing also around very high rate, especially at the beginning of year of the last uh, at the beginning of year of last year, thirty nine percent of admitted patient went lama. Uh, we ha we have analyzed all of this. We have a different causes, but one of them is multimorbidity. You have admitted patient for index disease renal. Well, after sometimes it is recovered, but develop other. Uh, activity of other associated comorbid. You need to help from the others. Well, the patient will not uh, tolerate to stay long and long. He asked uh, for lama. Uh, how to assess this clinical complexity? Usually, uh, there is no validated assessment tool. I checked uh, through my research this topic. I found at least 50 validated assessment uh, tool, uh, but majority of them, they are non-validated, but most three common to assess the clinical complexity, I found them. It is a modified Charleston morbid index, and this is present in mdcalc.com. You can use it uh, to assess, to, yeah, to, to predict the mortality of the patients. Uh, this is the most common used uh, method. Account for it. it is simple and reliable. Uh, also, another index of coexistent diseases, another uh, assessment tool, and Davis score. This is looks like you can get it from the mdcalc.com. And, uh, and you can fill the data will give you exactly the, the uh, prediction of mortality. The same for index of coexistent diseases, the same for Davis score. Uh, how to manage this dilemma? We have explained exactly the current situation of these multi-morbids, but what, what is the best approach? 
how can we tackle this issue or how can we uh, improve the quality of service regarding those type of patients. Uh, other facts, chronic disease management. As a fact, any chronic disease management, whatever it is preventive or curative, it is often complex. Exactly like diabetes, you have a diabetes, but it's a chronic uh, associated with secondary complication. But there is a complexity even with one single disease. You couldn't imagine if you have a multiple chronic diseases. When several diseases exist, it it's becomes more complex. Uh, even if you are going to take a, a usual trend or trend of uh, usual diagnosis in history or physical examination, or starative management, it is even likely not be successful. And it is very complicated uh, issue. It is not a single disease in order to apply all of these uh, upon this. Uh, we have limitation of ma management, as I said. Uh, Evidence-based approach, as we know all of us, work best in individual conditions. And evidence-based, you have a good grade and good strength of the evidence, you can apply. But in case of multiple chronic condition within the individual, it will be very difficult. Because of what? The multimorbid patient may be largely excluded from any trials. And even, even if the patient has a lot of comorbidity, admitted, will, uh, with this patient has a lot, a, 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 sorry, he has a lot of complications regarding these medical conditions. Sometimes if you are going to apply this guideline for each disease, it will be very difficult. And for an, for an example, we have admitted patients with cathodic bacterial infection, we have thromboembolic manifestations. Uh, but when are going to, uh, to, to, uh, to start, for example, anticoagulation, parental anticoagulation, the like our patient hemorrhagic cyst, he may develop uh, hemopsis or schist to pulmonary embolism. In this situation, you are going to to take the one of the other. Shall we continue anticoagulation? How can we anticoagulate this patient? The patient has high risk index of uh, uh, coagulopathy and also high risk index of uh, bleeding. We have a lot of uh, scores, but sometimes you are in dilemma. Uh, the scores of bleedings equal is course of thrombosis in this dilemma, how can you anticoagulate such uh, situation? This is an example for clinical uh, practice guidelines might conflict with each other. Uh, hence, if you are going to adhere to a single disease guideline for this type of patients, it will give you incomplete regimens and near total what's called medicalization of the patient's life. Uh, it is not uh, optimized as we want to be. Uh, so up till now, the prevalent best approach now has consists of breaking down as usually and separately analyzing each uh, chronic complaint component or individual approach. You cannot apply it for all patients. You should individualize your uh, treatment plan. Uh, plus, you need better continuity of care, care of coordinations, harmony in work, shared decision, or shared responsibility, among the concerned multi-speciality. We need here teamwork, but effective teamwork. It is not theoretical teamwork. It's... He should have clear cut plan. Plan of management, plan of diagnosis, sorry, plan of management, plan of follow-up, and he should settle exactly, if you're referring to him, he should settle exactly an effective plan. But unfortunately, the majority of the reply to our referral, it is vague. He will just ask you, do, 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 don't do, 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 added this. It is uh, breaking into pieces, as I said before. So there is no effective, uh, collaborated, or comprehensive uh, uh, medical plan. In general, it is this uh, uh, represent exactly the vision of centered care, surrounded by, this is the blue color represent the secondary care. It is encircling the patients. Here, uh, the care of secondary care, here is the primary health care and surrounded by community. Come on, this is theoretical, cannot be applied. I knew it is just only theoretically. Uh, it is published by uh, Royal College of Physicians. So we need, and it means we need to uh, make a co uh, and collaborative uh, network or collaborative plan 
in order uh, the special roaming at each institute for at least we should have uh, a system how to manage these patients uh, in collaboration with primary health care secondary health care tertiary health care alternative health care but at least it should be like a program but unfortunately uh, within the last years we, we didn't find something like this um in decisional disease dialysis multifaceted disease what is the uh, as a, a nephrologist we need to build renal multidisciplinary team renal well, at least this mdt should be constructed and should be designed at every department we have schist mdt we should have in our hospital we should have cardiology our cardiologist mdt or well, idt so you are you have a group of professionals working together the same goal in order to improve the overall quality of the patients and improve the clinical outcome uh, for this type of uh, comorbidity, we have to uh, construct what's called navigator teams. So this is their function is ongoing management and coordination of specialized care. They will uh, coordinate between each school uh, in Europe and UK. They are calling them different nominations, sometimes they are uh, uh, nominating them chronic disease caregiver or complex care navigator or case manager or something like this. Uh, usually, uh, case manager, let us to say, they are clinical transition nurses. They have degree of master or, de or degree of doctorate. They are sp highly specified in this field, how to navigate, how to coordinate, how to arrange for this uh, navigator teams. Uh, they this responsibility of navigator teams, our case manager mainly, uh, they have to include disease or health system educations. They have removing any medical system barrier between the team members. They should stay up to date about diagnosis. They should update and diagnose, treatment change, improvement continuously. Uh, they should establish standard of care and guidelines for chronic illness, uh, promoting more team based care. Uh, they measure, they measure. Ad They are following the patient, either he will go to the primary health care or he will go to tertiary health care or whatever. Uh, so they are care coordinators, we can say. Uh, usually, if we uh, establish this renal multidisciplinary team at our hospital, for example, the uh, primary team, it will be us regarding to our patient, plus in coordination with other concerned speciality, plus, plus nurse care management should be fixed care coordinator, uh, navigate within this uh, team. Renal pharmacist, he has a huge essential job. And the majority of our patients, they have, they are maintaining multiple medications. We, we don't have time to uh, review medication, drug-drug interaction, side effect, timing. The patient will ask a lot of questions. As a clinicians, we don't have time to uh, waste on on, on uh, explaining the, the, the drugs. But we should have renal. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, within the last two years, we have uh, a renal pharmacist. He's working with us. So he, she's, carrying, yeah, she's doing a very good job, and she's leaving us. With, with clinical uh, social worker is an effective plan. Uh, this, I, I summarize my, my topic. This traditional approach, this is what happened in our hospital. Elevation came to the knee. Uh, uh, we are referring to everybody, rejecting by everybody, admitted under us as the primary team. We, we are tackling the case, we are carrying the everything, we are referring to this and this. We are we provide a service only. Even if the patient recovered from our uh, perspectives, we are willing to take over for the other case, we are willing to discharge, we cannot discharge. The patient still have active, he is still sick, but this sickness related to the other uh, speciality. After that, uh, we, we refer them outside. But if we have renal uh, multidisciplinary team approach. Uh, on the right side, it, there is fixed member by name. We have renal pharmacist, fixed member, we have social worker, fixed member, we case manager. is uh, managing all of this process, we should nominating him, plus dietitian and secretary. Uh, here now our primary team, primary team giving the service related to the index disease. With other uh, uh, help from the other concerned uh, specialities, this is fixed and this are changeable. If we need cardio, if we need vascular, uh, if we need IDD, if we need ortho, they will be changeable according to the clinical situation of the patients. 
this our rule uh, treatment sorry we uh, we do investigation and sometimes if you're referring to the other speciality he will come and reply do 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 and even he is not doing by himself and if he request for investigation uh, he will just write in the in his notes and he didn't enter in the uh, lab chart the procedure the same even sometimes he asked for uh, ct angels contrast he didn't enter well, radiologists ask for justification why you are asking for my justification as requested by the also allowed by neuro or something like this but unfortunately we are doing investigations we monitoring we checking supervising if it is released we are going to refer to him again according to his request well, after that we, we 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 implemented this uh, service on the patient this is exactly our function as uh, primary uh, team uh, finally just i announce uh, about our first uh, osmt gulf cancer personnel this conference it is very important and the 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 time of event nowadays regarding to enhance service of personnel uh, at, at oman inshallah we hope from everybody to attend this conference inshallah and thank you very much do you have any questions alhamdulillah rabbil alamin